flight investigations. Air disasters. June 12, 2025. An Air India Boeing 787 crashed 32 seconds after taking off from Ahmedabad Airport. The plane crashed into a medical college dormitory near the end of the runway. On board were 230 passengers and 12 crew members. The Boeing 787 is a wide-body long-haul airliner which began operation in October 2011. Its main characteristics are a maximum takeoff weight of 227 tons and a maximum flight range of 13,600 kilometers. The passenger cabin capacity is up to 250 people. The Boeing 787 has established itself as one of the best inventions of the Boeing company and as one of the safest aircraft in human history. As of June 11, 2025, history knew of no aviation incidents with the 787 model that resulted in human casualties. The list of such aircraft also includes the Airbus A380, Airbus 340, Airbus A319-100, F-35, and IL-96. So for what reason was the Boeing 787 crossed off this list? June 12, 2025, Ahmedabad, India. Sardar, Vallabhai Patel International Airport. 11.17 local time. An Air India Boeing 787 touches down on the runway. It has just arrived from Delhi. The arriving crew makes an entry in the technical log about a faulty stabilizer position sensor. This aircraft also has a number of other minor malfunctions in accordance with the minimum equipment list. These include problems with the cockpit door, incorrect operation of the airport display map, malfunctions in the telecommunications data transmission and processing network, and malfunctions in the onboard printer. These malfunctions were identified on June 9th and must be eliminated by July 19th. The aircraft also has problems with the nitrogen generation equipment and minor issues with the passenger cabin and cargo compartments. These malfunctions must be eliminated by June 20th. For now, it is possible to fly with them. The aircraft's engines have recently undergone maintenance. The aircraft has to cover about six, 800 kilometers. To fly this distance, it will take more than nine hours of flight and over 50,000 kilograms of fuel. The commander is 56-year-old Summit Saparwal. He has more than 15,000 flight hours, of which 8,000 are on the Boeing 787 as a commander. The co-pilot is 32-year-old Clive Cooper with about three 500 flight hours. Both pilots are based in Mumbai and arrived in Ahmedabad the day before. They had enough time to rest. The crew distributes the duties as follows. The commander will perform the functions of pilot monitoring and the co-pilot will be the pilot flying. He will be the one to take the plane for takeoff. The maximum takeoff weight of this aircraft is 218 tons. This time, it is loaded almost to the maximum at 213 tons. The weather at the departure aerodrome is quite good. Headwind at a speed of 13 meters per second. Visibility 6,000 meters, no significant cloud cover. Temperature plus 37 degrees Celsius. Dew point plus 16 degrees Celsius. Departure is scheduled for 1310 local time. After completing all preparatory procedures at 1313, the crew requests permission for pushback. The controller clarifies whether the pilots will need the entire runway for takeoff, to which the crew replies in the affirmative, 1338. The airliner lifts off the ground, and 32 seconds later, it falls to the ground. Let's recall all the versions that were circulating in the media regarding this disaster. The first version, pilot error. Erroneous actions of the crew could have led to an incorrect configuration for takeoff. From the published video, it was not possible to draw precise conclusions about the configuration of the aircraft, but it could be assumed that the flaps were retracted and the landing gear was down. The aircraft was descending with its nose up, which indicated the crew's attempts to put the aircraft into a climb. This also indicated insufficient lift for climbing. It is unknown why the landing gear remained down until the moment of impact. The landing gear should have been retracted in the first seconds after liftoff it is also unknown whether the flaps were deployed and for what reasons they might not have been. The Boeing 787 is an aircraft with very reliable and multifunctional systems. 
These include the takeoff configuration warning system, which gives pilots a warning that the aircraft is not ready for takeoff. It appears from the analysis of the parameters of the flaps and air brakes and spoilers, thrust reversers, rudder positions, cabin doors, and so on. If these warnings were ignored, the aircraft could have had problems with generating lift. A problem with lift could also have arisen due to the high temperature, which worsens the aerodynamic capabilities of the aircraft. The second version, insufficient takeoff run distance of the aircraft. According to available data, the aircraft lifted off the runway at its very end. Based on this, it could be concluded that the distance and speed were insufficient. The crew taxied onto the runway via a taxiway. The distance from this taxiway to the end of the runway is approximately 1,900 meters. In such weather conditions, the aircraft needs a minimum of 2,500 meters. It was not possible to determine from which location the takeoff was performed, but a takeoff from taxiway C4 seemed unlikely. Following the taxiway, there is a turnaround bay at a distance of 2,700 meters. Such a distance is more suitable, but still not 100%. In the case of a short distance, the aircraft could have started to lift off, but at an insufficient speed, which on this aircraft is 270 to 300 kilometers per hour. Due to a lack of lift and a speed margin, the aircraft might not have transitioned into a climb. The third version, a bird strike. Bird strikes are an eternal problem in aviation that poses a very serious danger. A bird strike can damage engines or aerodynamic surfaces, causing engine failure or malfunction, as well as control problems. According to one Indian television company, for the period 2022-2023, 38 cases of aircraft colliding with birds were recorded at Ahmedabad Airport, and the period over five years had 462 such incidents. The engine manufacturer noted that the engines with which the Boeing 787 is equipped are sensitive to bird ingestion, but a double failure is unlikely. The fourth version, engine failure, mechanical breakdowns and failures, fuel contamination, poor maintenance. There are many reasons that can cause an engine to fail. According to instructions, if any problems arise during takeoff, the crew must abort it. The Indian media drew attention to the fact that after liftoff, the crew of Flight 171 declared a distress signal, but the reason was not mentioned. It could have been an engine failure, which at this stage is extremely dangerous. A surviving passenger shared his memories of the event. According to his feelings, everything was fine at first, but then the plane seemed to just shut down. This statement could indicate the occurrence of engine problems. In addition, on the published materials, a sound was heard that is very similar to the operation of an emergency turbine. This system is a small propeller that is deployed in the tail of the aircraft at the bottom and rotates due to the oncoming airflow. Thus, the aircraft receives power in emergency cases. The deployment of this unit indicates that there has been a failure of the engines, hydraulic system, or power supply. This turbine is connected to hydraulic pumps and an electric generator. Thanks to it, Power is supplied to important flight control, navigation, and communication systems. The fifth version, weather conditions. Weather has a very strong influence on flight safety. Phenomena such as wind shear, turbulence, or high temperature could have affected the takeoff by limiting lift. But in this situation, weather conditions were more likely a factor that exacerbated other problems rather than the key cause. The sixth version, an act of unlawful interference. In any air crash, investigators consider this cause. The tense political situation in India could have provoked an act of this kind, but the authorities do not believe that this was possible. The seventh version, a problem with the fly-by-wire FBW system. There is some chance that this disaster involves a version with problems in the operation of the FBW system. This system replaced the traditional options for controlling control surfaces with cables with modern principles of control using a computer. A failure in the operation of this system could have caused problems or limited the ability to control the position of the flaps and other surfaces. Given the reliable duplication of the aircraft's systems, such a failure is unlikely. But the presence of some malfunctions in the operation of this system could have been a contributing factor to the disaster. The eighth version. This version. 
was that the commander's seat had a malfunction in the seat position adjustment mechanism. There was information that on June 1st, 11 days before the accident, the left seat in the cockpit was repaired. Everyone who has flown on airplanes knows this feeling of heaviness at the moment of liftoff. The same thing is felt not only by passengers, but also by pilots. It was at the moment of liftoff that the aircraft commander's seat suddenly and sharply moved back. The commander's hand, which was on the thrust levers, inertially pulled the levers back, moving them to a much lower operating mode position. Due to the G-force, the commander was not able to immediately restore his position. Subsequently, the crew did not have enough time to bring the engines to take off power. The ninth version, the power supply unit. An aircraft on the ground is different from an aircraft in the air in almost all respects, including the elements of the electrical configuration. In the air and on the ground, it is different. The transition from one configuration to another occurs gradually. To ensure safety during takeoff, the engines begin to operate at higher power. More energy is generated, and systems that are specifically needed to ensure flight are launched. According to this version, during the aircraft's liftoff from the ground, there was a power outage. During the change in the electrical configuration, there was a cascade of system failures and a failure of the full authority digital engine control, FADEC systems. The cause was the incorrect operation of the main power supply unit from which sparking occurred. It was assumed that water had gotten inside it during a heavy rain when the ground power unit was disconnected. This malfunction led to the fact that four to five seconds after liftoff, both engines switched to idle mode, which implies minimum thrust. But for takeoff, maximum thrust is needed. The ingress of rain into the power supply unit caused the engines to shut down, without which flight is impossible. Determining the cause of the incident without a report is always difficult because there are many options. According to statistics, aviation events occur due to the simultaneous coincidence of many factors. But the main reason, as a rule, is very simple. According to the Convention on International Civil Aviation, a preliminary report must be submitted within 30 days of the occurrence of an aviation incident. The Investigation Commission released this report on time. According to it, this is what happened. After liftoff from the runway, events unfolded very rapidly. The fuel supply toggle switches to the engines are switched to the off position with an interval of one second. As a result, the engine power begins to decrease. A short dialogue occurs in the cockpit. Why did you turn off the fuel supply? I didn't do anything. After five seconds, the engine speeds drop below the minimum and the ram air turbine, RAT, deploys. 10 seconds after being switched off, the fuel supply switch for the first engine is moved back to the on position. Following that, the fuel supply switch for engine number two is also moved to the on position. Switching the fuel supply system to the on mode leads to the engine control system beginning to restart and restore their thrust. The exhaust gas temperature rises, which indicates that the engines are restarting. The rotation of engine number one stops slowing down and it begins to start up. Engine number two manages to start, but its rotational speed cannot be prevented from decreasing. The crew transmits on the radio. After 32 seconds, the plane crashes into the dormitory of a medical college. The wreckage is scattered over an area of 300 by 120 meters. A fire starts in five buildings on the ground. Five minutes after the crash, airport rescue services arrive at the scene of the disaster. City firefighters rush to help them. 19 people on the ground die, and 67 are injured. 241 of those on board die. Only a 38-year-old man named Kumar, who was sitting in seat 11A, manages to survive. After the impact, he regains consciousness and sees a terrible sight around him, but he also sees an exit nearby. Unbuckling his seatbelt, he gets out from under the wreckage. Thus, it can be assumed that one of the pilots turned off the fuel supply to the engines and 10 seconds later turned it back on. But it was too late. The report does not state this directly. The investigation is ongoing. Black Box Flight Investigations